pans. There are so many varieties to choose from, but they're not all created equal. And here to break down the science of your kitchen cookware. Um, Sorry. Again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Terry. It's just really it's Terry. It's Terry. She's, Terry. She's it's not happy with things. it. Probably not. Baby Sam changed her mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. JJ Dankola are here to break down the science. That's for Hi, us. guys. Hi. Hi. You know, we, we wanted to bring this together because we thought it was a, an excellent melding of our two skills. That's right. And uh, so I want to start right off the bat with nonstick pants. There's a lot of myths out there. People wonder are they safe? Are they right. not safe? Should I be using these at all? The thing you want to remember at home these are safe unless they're damaged and damage comes in two forms. The first where we're gonna talk about it, scratches and pitting. You can see that right here. You cannot use any metal instruments, any metal utensils in pans like this. It'll scratch that coating. Uh, these pans are meant for sauteing, for reheating leftovers, and that's because the second way you can damage them is with too much heat, that's right, right, JJ? That's right, exactly. So when you apply heat to these, especially if you have a pan that's uh, preheating empty, or if you're cooking something like steak or something in oil, these pans, once they reach 520 degrees, actually start to release toxic uh, fumes that we cannot see, but they can get into our lungs and cause something called Teflon flu. Oh. And so it's flu-like symptoms. Really? And even more importantly, if you all at home have birds, especially Parrots, these fumes can actually be lethal to them. Oh my goodness. So we can't leave these pans on high at all. So they come with package instructions for a reason. It's because they are meant to be cooked at low or medium. And if you cook them on high, toss them. Okay, so if they're scratched, toss them. Yeah, yes. and the thing to remember is, after about a minute and a half on the pan on the stove, if you're cooking, these, if you're heating these up to sear a steak, after about a minute and a half, it's already crossed 500 degrees, and that's oh. the no-no. That's the magic yeah. threshold. We, we don't realize how hot the stove can get. So these. Teflon pans like this are not. I have to throw them out because I want that sizzle. And yeah, yeah, it yeah but it's hot. not the right pan to use it with. So at home, I mean, don't spend a lot of money on nonstick. I mean, spend six, ten dollars because toss them every six months. Don't take every six chance. months. Yeah. Okay, my goodness. So right, now, what about aluminum? Because yeah. aluminum gets a bad rap. It does get a bad rap. Now you should know aluminum is the workhorse of the commercial kitchen. Okay, these are used everywhere, and aluminum is one of the most prominent elements on Earth. Right? right. It's it's in the soil. It's just generally present. And the reason commercial kitchens use these is because aluminum is very reactive. It heats up incredibly quickly so you can get that really nice sizzle, that really nice sear, and they're inexpensive because again, aluminum is very present in the world. Now, I said they're reactive. This is a pan that's been used for a while, and you'll see, because aluminum is so reactive, if you cook a lot of acids, and we're talking about tomato sauce, right. Anything it's going to start to discolor the pan, and some of that me metallic flavor can leach into your food. But is that safe? Um, it is safe, and actually, I'm going to debunk the, the myth now, because the, actually the Alzheimer's Association and good scientific study have shown that there's no relationship to dementia and aluminum. So the key thing to understand is that experiments have also been done about how much aluminum actually leaches into a pan, and it's found that tomato sauce cooked in here overnight releases 87 or 83,000 times less aluminum than a tum. All right, so <laughs> that puts 83,000 times, times less, less. than a tum. Wow. In other and words, how many tums have we all eaten? In our life? <laughs> you, you'd wow. have to cook tomato <laughs> sauce in this pan and eat it for 260 years wow. before you get enough aluminum to match a tum. Okay, oh, so I just wanted that's to see your perspective. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to see you do that math. And did you that went up. We yeah. checked and we double checked. <laughs> we, we, we did the calculations, and this is one of, of those things did. that's great to do. Debunk because yeah. again, aluminum. Oh, Matt, Matt you yeah. know, we're doing some heavy calculations Sorry. here. It's true. Yeah. You're really yeah. distracted. This is for the benefit of our viewers. <laughs> right. So rude. So good, cheap, light, and efficient. Okay. 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 Now. Absolutely. Moving on, this to me is the perfect middle ground between nonstick and between right. aluminum. Carbon this is steel. called carbon steel. Yeah. Carbon steel is actually related to cast iron. I know they sound like they're different, um, but it's uh, it's incredibly dense metal, which means you can heat it up so oh. high. You can put this under the broiler. You can put this right on the stove. If you want a great sear, this is the metal for it. Now it's less expensive than cast iron because it's easier to manufacture. Cast iron is very, very difficult, very heavy, but because this can be pressed thinner, it's less expensive, and you can actually invest in these a little more. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. JJ? Yeah, you can. They're they're lighter. They are predominantly made out of iron, so they have some of the benefits of a cast iron pan. For example, that looks like cast iron. Once it's wow. seasoned, it is essentially non-stick, so you're using less fat, less butter when you're frying or sauteing, and so that's good if you're watching the, those calories. Secondly, the pans, if there is a little bit of acid in there, release a bit of iron, and especially if you're not a meat eater or you're trying to keep iron up in your diet, it's a great way to do that. The key thing is they need to be seasoned, and here's a last little tip for you. We can season these by washing the manufacturer's oil off first, sauteing some onions and oil, tossing those, 
and then just running it under hot water with a stiff brush and uh, heating it on top of the stove for a minute or so until it's dry. And then you have a perfectly seasoned pan what? that will last forever. And this is mine. You can see the difference. Yeah. This is unseasoned. This one's and been that's seasoned. Mine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that the same exact pan? Yeah. Just one was seasoned? Right. That's what it, right. Whoa. Yeah, this, oh. this one's about four, four years like old. That. Like, yeah. Yeah. It should get black. This, right. is non exactly. this is the natural nonstick coating. Yeah. And just real quick, back to the, the other one, nonstick, cleaning them, mild. Cleaning them, is, uh, just a scotch bright. Uh, just a really, something again, mild. Again, not, not, not your scrubbies right. that are made out of, of metal, because yeah. that would, uh, again, and degrade the surface. But do you still love cast iron the best? I like them both. You know, to be totally honest, I'm a carbon steel fan. Mm -hmm. Really, I love yeah. cast iron. I love cast iron too, it but I think this. Steak. I sure. think this is what people are missing in their kitchens. But okay. you'll get it. It's a little known fact, and, and you're more familiar with these as woks. So all woks are carbon steel, yeah. and so you can do oh. these with, oh, with I a frying pan. That. Yeah, oh. you so much. You guys, such great information. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, two smarty pants together. No. <laughs> there too you go. much smarty pants. <laughs> yeah, too much brains in this room. All right, you guys stick around. Next up, more from the family. But I guess you balance it out. Thank you.